Well, Dr. Bugden, I think a lot of people would like to know, what was it that drew you to emergency medicine? So I spent a lot of time in Corner Brook um, during clerkship doing emergency medicine out there. And I really came to enjoy the variability, the fact that I didn't know what was going to come through the door. Uh, my day was, my, no two days were ever the same. So I guess emergency medicine is one of those things where you need to know uh, a bit about everything. Um, so some days may have, you know, seem to follow more concentration with, you know, bones, for example. So when we go into winter season and we get more icy conditions, we obviously tend to get more slip and falls uh, or heavy snow we tend to get you know more shoveling and chest pains with heavy snow but now tomorrow when I work it might be very different and I might not see any broken bones or any chest pain and so we never know what's going to come and we have to always be prepared for whatever does come through our doors. Is practicing emergency medicine in Newfoundland different <laughs> than practicing in other places do you think? I think emergency medicine across the country shares a lot of the same sort of features um, Newfoundland is a bit unique in that we know Newfoundlanders have a high incidence of uh, heart problems, for example, so I do think we tend to see more cardiac issues that present into the emergency room. Uh, we also do struggle with family doctor shortages, so sometimes people um, have to use the emergency room because they don't have any other physician to care for them. So I think those two things, uh, they're not unique to Newfoundland or St. John's at all, and it's definitely something that we are seeing across the country, but are our two challenges. You're a young woman, you're a Newfoundlander who's familiar with the provincial health care system, and now, of course, you're in a leadership role as clinical chief. What unique skills and abilities and perspectives do you bring to the role? I am from rural Newfoundland. I was raised in rural Newfoundland. So I do recognize some of the challenges that running um, hospital and healthcare facilities in rural Newfoundland do pose, um, which are unique in, the, in itself. Uh, and geographically, it makes those things a little bit difficult to provide care to those patients. But I have a really good working relationship with all our health, allied health professionals. So nurses, data entry clerks, um, PCAs, um, and I do think after 10 years you do get to be quite familiar with other sort of specialties and professionals within the field. So I think having a very good working relationship with people uh, is very helpful when you're trying to sort of reach common ground and you know for problem solving. So there's some pretty unique challenges within emergency medicine. There's needing to provide 24-7 coverage, needing to be prepared for anything at a moment's notice, very urgent issues that show up on the doorstep. So sometimes, you know, if an ambulance radios in, then we have, you know, a short little bit of period of time to sort of adjust and arrange for what may be coming. Um, but oftentimes people drive to the facility uh, or, you know, walk to the facility and we don't have any a warning that they're coming and suddenly, you know, that usually makes us kind of spring into action a little bit quicker. So it's a pretty intense environment, isn't it? It is an intense environment and of course some days are busier than others and, and that's an average sort of visit. Uh, some days when people come here the place, this place is quite busy and quite congested and you know there are times when people may come and get seen rather quickly uh, because the volumes are lower that day but there's really no way to sort of plan for those sorts of things. So when somebody presents to the emergency room and in urgent need of a bed, sometimes that requires us to juggle things around, so to speak, uh, which may result in patients being moved from their bed space into the hallway, uh, which sometimes is a very difficult thing for patients to understand, of course. Um, but, you know, we do it with all good intentions and in trying to get people to the most appropriate bed space for their most appropriate care at that time. Um, so we never try to move people who have sort of infection control issues, who may be immunocompromised such as you know, patients who are taking chemotherapy or other sort of medications that may um, potentially dampen their immune system. We try to take all those things into account when we do choose people to move, but sometimes we ultimately don't have any choice, but sometimes we do have to put people into the hallways so that we can provide active treatment for others who might present. And of course, one thing we've heard over the years, and sometimes very loudly, has to do with wait times in emergency rooms. As clinical chief, what do you want people to understand about the processes and procedures that happen within the, within the walls of an emergency department? Uh, I guess at most that we are working as hard and as diligent as we can to get you seen as quickly as we can uh, in a safe and timely manner. Um, wait times in the emergency room are always a very hot topic, and not just provincially or in the city, but nationally right now there's been lots of work 
done by national uh, groups around wait times in the emergency room. And in a similar way that they've set targets for um, hip surgeries or hip replacement surgeries, for example, there's national targets that have been set for wait times in the emergency room. And of course, that depends on what you've been quote unquote triaged as, because when you present to the emergency room, with your complaint, the nurse then assigns you a triage score, with one being the most acute, meaning you need urgent life-saving care immediately, and with five being on the lower end, which you're where, not to say that your complaint is not warranted, but that it's safe for you to wait for a short period of time. Um, so we try to provide that care to you as quick as we can, um, recognizing all those things that I just talked about. And there has been improvement, hasn't there? Um, so at the Health Science site, we've in, um, initiated something called the Fast Track Area or the Rapid Assessment Zone Area. And this is an area that's meant to sort of funnel the uh, lower CTAS scores, so the fours and fives through, so the less urgent um, implications, or sorry, less urgent presentations that come to the emergency room. Um, so that in itself has decreased the wait times um, for that group of patients considerably. The other thing uh, people may have noticed at the Health Sciences and at St. Clair's is that we have nurse practitioners who also see patients. So potentially you may see a physician. Um, you of course may see a resident or a medical student, but indeed you also might see a nurse practitioner. Uh, and they're highly sk skilled individuals as well. And you know, multifactorial sort of teams help decrease our wait times. Again, being a regional program, a lot of these uh, ventures are sort of region-wide, and there are nurse practitioners that work, of course, outside the city and in these smaller sites. Uh, there's also some um, what we call surge capacity protocols, which are working within the region. So should there be a certain number of charts, there's key factors that you know would trigger these sorts of things. A certain number of charts or a certain number of patients with a higher acuity, uh, then there's some availability to bring in an extra physician to help sort of decrease the backlog. What are your thoughts at this point in your uh, practice and also in, in your position? So I'm excited about what's to come. I think we've done some really good work. Uh, I had a great mentor before me, so he's uh, he left big shoes to fill, so to speak, um, but he's also been a great support to me as I continue. Um, our group here, you know, within Eastern Health is phenomenal. Uh, we work well together. We have, you know, a lot of eager people who are trying to make this whole experience better for everyone. Uh, so I think there's still lots of good things to come and lots of good work to build on. Great, thanks very much. Thank you.